Uh, question number three. Uh, video games, I should say statement number three. Video games, um, uh, video games help with problem solving. They make you better at problem solving. What do you guys think? Fact, fiction, or mystery? Fact? Any, no, uh, fiction? I hear fiction. Fiction? Uh, I would say mystery. Uh, um, and, I'll, and I'll explain to you why. I mean, this is something that's like hotly talked about. So if you like go, go on the internet and you search for problem solving, you're going to find lots and lots of articles and tweets and discussions about, um, yes, video games help with problem solving. And the gist of the argument is pretty much, well, video games involve problem solving. I'm solving problems in the game. So it must be that in my everyday life, I'm also better at solving problems. Um, but I'm here to tell you that there is no comprehensive research in this field, pretty much whatsoever. Um, so it's really quite unknown, and I would argue that it's probably because the whole concept of problem solving is quite vague and broad, like what type of problems are being solved. Uh, but I do want to share with you some things that we do know from the literature. Uh, for instance, um, we do know that when gamers are playing games, they have to think in problem-solving-like ways. So there are studies where children or adults are told to play a game and think out loud, and they record what people are saying, and they code it afterwards, and they say, oh, wow, this pattern of thinking is like problem-solving. So problem-solving is happening while people are playing games, something you probably could have told me already. But still, it's out there. Um, another really interesting study that came out a while ago came from people that were basically lurking these World of Warcraft forums, and they were looking at what people were typing inside the forums, and they took all that, they coded that information, and they saw how much people were actually talking in scientific ways, testing out ideas, being cr critical thinking, and they observed a lot of critical thinking in these World of Warcraft forums. So it seems that there might be an association between problem solving and certain types of gaming. Uh, I la the last thing I want to do in this topic is share with you a really interesting study that tries to show this longitudinal effect of this problem solving. So when we think about the World of Warcraft guys, well, you would think maybe because they like problem solving, that's why they play World of Warcraft, not that playing Warcraft might make you be better at problem solving. Five minutes. Really? Well, I'm going to skip this then. Um, and I'm going to skip this, and I'm going to skip this, and I'll tell you there's a great longitudinal study. And I'm going to skip, and I'm going to skip, and I'm going to tell you that um, we don't really know. Time is going to tell. And now I want to tell you about the study that I ran on StarCraft, where I am interested in the idea that video games can help people solve emotional problems. And the gist of uh, the idea and the gist of my research is to look at the associations between how we deal with stress in everyday contexts and how, how we deal with stress in a video game context. And um, what, my, what I'm interested in, in terms of research, is seeing whether experiencing stress in the video game, um, whether overcoming that stress and experiencing that for yourself um, can benefit you in everyday contexts, because the feeling of stress, what happens to your body when you're feeling stress in both contexts, is essentially the same. That's the idea that I want to explore with you uh, with this study. So um, normally this line of thought, the first thing I need to convince people of is that video games are stressful. But you guys play StarCraft, which is chess on steroids, so you know it's a stressful game. It's stressful, right? Um, but there is some literature out there that shows that when people do play games, it is stressful, which is really nice. Um, and so the kernel of the study that I'm going to talk about now in the next three minutes is um, the kernel of the study is that um, I wanted to think of what process is common to both contexts. So what aspects of dealing with stress happen both in a game and in everyday contexts? And I want to say that um, and what I think the answer to that question is, is something called interoceptive awareness. And interoceptive awareness is a really fancy term for um, what's hap being aware of what's happening to your body in terms of your physiology. And this is tightly linked to your emotions, because when you feel an emotion, your body changes in a very specific way. Um, and um, understanding what your body is going through when you're feeling these stress, when you're going through these stressful situations, um, is beneficial for you to be able to deal with those emotions. So if you understand the source of them and you understand how to bring your body down, then you're going to be better able to control your emotions in stressful situations. And that's out there in the literature. So I did a study where I wanted to see whether players who are more aware of their bodily changes while they're playing a stressful game, StarCraft II. Uh, whether these players would also show more healthy tendencies of dealing with stress in everyday contexts. That's the idea of my study. And I'm going to kind of skip through this slide because it's about the methods, but that's the gist of the study. Okay, um, and I'm going to skip this video clip. It's essentially explaining that um, 
essentially explaining that we measure their heart rate during the, vid during the game, and then right after, uh, right after we get their heart rate, then we have them watch a game on a replay and rate throughout the entire game how much stress they think they felt at every moment of the game. And what you end up with is something that looks like this. This is, um, this is their heart rate during the game, the blue line, and the red line is how much stress they think they felt at each moment of the game while watching it again right after the match. And this is somebody who I would say has very low interoceptive awareness. So if you see throughout like a big portion of the game, they think they experience lots of stress, but their body says that it doesn't. Um, and if, when you, if we look at another participant, we can see that's much better because um, the, rel the relative scores are going up and down at pretty much the same rate um, and in pretty much the same places. So this is an example of somebody who is good at it. And I'm going to skip my next video, but I basically wanted to show you a bit of like how this looks in the lab. This is some gameplay footage. We're just going to skip right Mineral through because you guys have seen lots of StarCraft today already. And we're just going to get our way to the findings. So what you guys understand the question. The question is, does com when I compare the heart rate and I compare the dial, does those who are more aware, are they going to show healthier tendencies of dealing with their emotions in everyday contexts? And um, the answer was, um, we observed three, um, three things that I can mention. The first one is that people that were better were more likely to actively try to resolve a problem. So they reported, it's all self-report, we're asking them this. They report saying that, yes, when I, have a pro when I have a stressful situation, I get right to it and I try to solve the problem. And we also observe an, a trend, so it's not fully significant, but it's in the right direction, of uh, them also seeking instrumental support, turning to others uh, to try to like concretely solve their problems. And we see a negative association with them withdrawing away from problems. So um, these are some ways in which uh, I think we can push this research forward. And the main conclusion I want you to walk away with is that uh, it's necessary for much more research to be done to look at this over the long term. So having people play these stressful games and seeing how they downregulate their, their stress during the game, whether over time that will help them uh, in everyday contexts uh, deal with real stressful situations. Um, so to wrap things up, um, it remains a mystery whether violent video games cause violence. Uh, it is a fact that uh, video games improve your uh, perceptual abilities. It remains a mystery whether or not problem solving is improved, and I believe and hope that more research will be done in the field to see whether or not uh, video games can help people deal with their emotions and better overcome stress in everyday contexts. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. And, uh, and I want to thank, I also want to thank everybody that was involved that made all this research possible. Uh, my supervisors, who are not up on the screen, uh, and Frank as well, who helped with, uh, with, uh, with our data collection. If you're interested in any of these slides, well, you can't see it now. If you're interested in any of these slides, contact me, contact Frank. I can get you the slides. I'm on Twitter, and you can follow me and all that. Thank you. You're welcome.